By the grace of FYE, we are back, and today, it's Alien Day. LV426, what is that? 426, April 26th. From now on, it's going to be National Aliens Day. Thanks to Fox Studios, the Alien franchise, and our buddies at FYE. So if you didn't know, next week, April 26th, help celebrate Alien Day. And so we're gonna show you some of our favorite alien toys, and as well, we have five amazing alien facts for you. And hang around towards the end of the episode, we're gonna debut some exclusive pictures of Super 7's 18-inch Hive Warrior. Oh, wow. You've probably already seen some awesome premieres of new alien product that are coming out. We saw the Toy Hunters ad yep. that had the Super 7 Kinkeshi. We've seen the Reebok Stompers that are getting a re-release. The Japanese Super 7 Reaction Box. Uh, the carrying case, uh, which is such a great retro throwback. It's amazing. What an amazing time to be an Aliens fan. Not to mention, we have Prometheus 2 coming out soon? I'll probably see it, who am I kidding? <laughs> well, that ties into your fifth fact that you have. Yeah, let's jump right to the fifth fact. Aliens in particular was super important to me because it was the only VHS tape I had. It was taped off a of TV, but there was one tape that was Predator 2 and Aliens. Wow! And, I, and in probably middle school to high school, I would just watch both of them back to back. What was first? Aliens was first. Oh, okay. But it still had like uh, TV movie commercials at the yeah. beginning, like before the film started. Like uh, Campbell Soup? No, it was like some, it was like um, Sledgehammer on ABC. It was like some weird oh, like cop okay. drama stuff. Um, they do that intro like now, yeah. their movie presentation. Yes, exactly. It's like, yeah. I must have watched it a thousand times and I actually had not seen Alien at that point. Oh, I wow. I only seen Aliens and I... I, you know, I memorized it. I absolutely, I know every single Marine. I know every person that appears in that movie. Like, it's, you know, it was a hugely influential piece of my uh, teenage years. Arguably, it's the best in the franchise, directed by James Cameron. I, I think they're all kind of different. I don't know, yeah. I, I don't know, you can't really stack Alien and Aliens up they're against different. each other. Totally different films, you know. So we have five not so very well known facts about aliens. Number five, the sentry gun scene. So there's a deleted scene in Aliens where the Marines set up sentry guns. Mm -hmm. it, it's right when the uh, horde starts to, you know, cave in on them. Mm -hmm. So they set up these sentry guns and we're sort of watching all the bullets tick off of the counters mm -hmm. and we're seeing like, you know, they're quickly becoming overwhelmed by it. In most cuts of the movie, they actually mention that they salvage sentry guns. Yeah. You know, they say we got some flamethrowers, we got some pulse rifles, you know, a couple handguns, and they actually mention the sentry guns. They cut that out, I'm not sure why they did, but um, you know, most prints of the film don't have that really amazing sentry gun scene. But it is available on YouTube for... Yeah, watching. you can check it out on YouTube. Number four, Operation Alien. The cartoon. There was Toxic Avenger, mm -hmm. there was Robocop. There was all these brutal movies turned into cartoons. And Alien almost was greenlit, and then it just never happened. It's true. So Operation Alien was the animated series. A couple relics online, some, yeah. some still imagery you can see. I've never seen any footage of the animation, but it seems like they were pretty far down the production road. And a lot of the toys are kind of based off of that. All cartoon. of the toys yeah. that we got from Kenner in the 90s were based on this cartoon. And the cartoon supposed, this was pre-Alien 3, mm -hmm. that Hicks and Napon and Drake and everyone else survived mm -hmm. and they got sort of cybernetic augmentations. So. Yeah, your favorite character or your favorite toy is the woman with the red bandana. Vasquez. Vasquez. Yeah. You know, uh, like Sergeant Apone has a big mechanical arm, and mm -hmm. it was before this the storyline of Alien 3, where, you know, obviously nobody survived except for Ripley. Mm -hmm. But it's such an interesting sort of artifact, and, you know, maybe one day we'll get to see what this uh, cartoon could have been. Yeah. Number three, Alien Berserker. So this isn't so much a fun fact. Was your favorite? But this is my favorite piece of the Alien mythology. There was a Dark Horse comic series, uh, there's four comics, called Berserker. Mm -hmm. And the premise was a big mech suit would go into the hives and just mow down the aliens. What, what else would you, like, how awesome is that? It, it was amazing. You know, I remember just reading it as a kid and just being blown away. What an amazing sort of premise this was. Towards the end of the comic, spoiler alert, you find out that there's actually a decrepit human body inside of the Berserker Oh, suit. no way! So it was somebody they kept in a medical coma and then they would like 
pump full of adrenaline and he'd go nuts and start. Oh, know. so it wasn't like it was someone piloting the suit. Yeah. But like they what? just sent. What's... You you kind of thought it was a robot or something. Yeah. You know that they would just power up and send into the hives. Um, like remote control from right. like uh, off site. Yeah. Wow. I, it's a great story. I hope I didn't just ruin the ending, but you should still go read it. But most notably, the cover art was done by Killian Plunkett who went on to be the art director at Lucasfilm for animation, and he's currently the art director of Star Wars Rebels. Oh, wow, the one that's currently running. Yeah, tremendously talented artist, and you'll see these covers, and they're just, they're absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this guy is a once-in-a-lifetime sort of artist. Is there any toys of the Berserker? No, that's the other thing. To my knowledge, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think the, the idea of the Berserker mech suit has appeared in any other you know, canon or any other video games or things like that. It might have. I just haven't ever seen it. And it seemed like such a unique and interesting sort of take on it. I would love a Alien Berserker movie. It would that, be great. That sounds like something that Super 7 would do. Nah. You know? <laughs> we gotta get Brian Flynn on the phone. We gotta, we gotta make this happen. And we did mention Alien 3, but our second fact actually is about Alien 3. That's right. I actually love Alien 3. So, David Fincher. David Fincher, who's done Gone Girl, Fight Club, Fight Club, MySpace Movie. Oh, The Social Network. Found Girl. I don't know what that one is. <laughs> Gone Girl. <laughs> Found Girl. Gone Girl 2, Goner Girl. <laughs> He's arguably one of the greatest directors of our generation, I yeah. think. Pretty pretty safe bet to say there. But uh, yeah. He did Zodiac too. He did Zodiac. No, yeah. just part one. I don't think there was a sequel. Oh. Zodiac, amazing film. Yeah. You, I mean, the resurgence of Robert Downey Jr. is probably due in small part to yeah. how great he was in Zodiac. Great film, great director. I actually love Alien 3. It was a tumultuous process for him. He left the film before it was edited. Yeah. They sort of pieced it together. It, it's not a perfect film, but I've rewatched it recently and I think it holds up. It's quite amazing. Crazy visuals. It's so like 90s grunge, techno music video Yeah, it's shoot. like 90s and very much almost Whatever's happening in the Matrix, all those dance yeah. clothes, that's <laughs> yeah. Alien 3. It's a great movie, and what many people don't know is there was a earlier script to Alien 3 that was written by William Gibson of Neuromancer fame, one of the greatest sci-fi authors of all time, and that actually focused more on Hicks and Bishop, oh. because they weren't sure Sigourney Weaver was going to return for Alien 3. Yeah. So they wrote this other film, which you can find the script online and read it, it's quite good, where it's kind of like Hicks and Bishop go off and have an adventure, which yeah. is a movie I still want to see. It's just like the the infamous scene with like Ripley like this, it's just Hicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thankfully NECA are sort of paying homage to Alien 3, they're releasing the Yutani Commando, which yes. I think was a deleted scene, but it's such a crazy armored suit that's so such like a Fincher creation. Yeah. It almost doesn't fit in the Alien universe, but we're going to get a 7-inch figure of that, and I'm very excited. And the number one, what you said, kind of ties with Prometheus 2. Yeah. So this fact is going to blow your mind, as it did mine when I found out not too long ago. You know, and I, I've studied a lot of the lore of Alien. You know, I, for a good 10 years, I knew everything that was out there. I read all the spin-off novels, all the comic books. The alien, originally, that we, we meet in the first film, is actually the infant, yeah. right? And as it grows older and as it matures, it actually calms down. And it's not such a violent creature. Yeah. And it goes on to cultivate, yeah. you know, uh, pursuits in art and they have a higher intelligent culture and they're capable of speech and they even mm. perform music. So the original script has, you know, touches on the later lifespan of that alien creature. Mm. Now, we never saw that and it all got discarded when it came to the sequel, mm -hmm. but a lot of those ideas of the alien going on and having this cultured existence mm -hmm. was reused in Prometheus. With, yeah, with the engineers. With the engineers, and they they can play the flute, and they <laughs> and uh, drive cars. They make <laughs> maps. So you're saying? I mean, you maybe you get a glimpse of that, like in the end of the movie. All he wants to do is sleep. He wasn't bothering <laughs> anyone. <laughs> well, I, there is a deleted scene of Dallas in a cocoon, yeah. and the idea was that is another stage of metamorphosis for mm -hmm. these. But it didn't really fit in with the, you know, uh, what they had explained on screen for the life cycle of the alien. So they mm -hmm. cut that deleted scene. But it's kind of a holdover of this idea of the alien just being an infant and, you know, it, it has a, a much more profound life after yeah. the first film. 
but also reveals what happened to Dallas, because you never see what happens to him on screen. Correct. And that is our top five interesting facts about Alien. So let's talk more about the toys. You've been looking at the toys while we babble on, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. actually, Brian Flint of Super 7 That's decided right. to send us these sneak peek photos of a Hive member. So this is, you know, we've all known the 18-inch Alien, yeah. of course the classic Kenner one back in the 70s, and I think there's been some re-releases since then. There was a great Kubrick, yeah. uh, Bear Brick one that was done. But this is the first time we're getting the Hive Warrior from Aliens in this 18-inch format. Hive Warrior is so much radically different. They got the tubes on the back of their back, and they got the different hands. With yeah, it's almost like this. Here. Yeah, exactly. The, the penguin hands from Batman Returns. Basically, yeah, that's how it all ties together. So I'm very excited that we're finally getting the Hive Warrior in this format. There's also, I mean, there's tons of great product coming out. The Reebok Stompers, I gotta get a pair of those. Now, if you are a fan of Aliens, there's one destination that you gotta go to. FYE. FYE, baby, that's right. Any mall worth its salt in the US of A, they're gonna have an FYE store, and that's where I'm going on 426 to get my alien goods. Also, I'm gonna stop by Auntie Anne's to get a pretzel. You can have a pretzel, but I don't want you to go overboard on the dipping. Video. Yeah, I only want like four sauces, that's it, for one pretzel. You just do the pretzel. So happy Alien Day, and the only thing left to say is... Pete's out. Could you just see the alien like playing a flute though? It wouldn't <laughs> it's actually his tail. Making pottery. <laughs> it's like ghosts. Yeah. Two aliens. It's like Gordon Weaver.